follow us down to the endorphin producing paradise, a veritable bow hunters of Valhalla that we like to call Texas. Hey, hey brother! Yeah. <laughs> it's so much good to see you, man. <laughs> it's great to have you in camp. Yeah. Hey, man, you seen footlongs, buddy? If he comes in here, bones out, I might have to kill him. Just for Fred Bear, Ted Nugent. There was blood everywhere. I know it's been said before, but Stevie Wonder could have followed this blood trail. Easy to follow that one. Look at you, fellow bow hunting enthusiast. If you're sitting there watching TV right now and you're hearing these words coming out of it, that must mean you're watching Red Arrow Season 13, in which case we've all made it out of the dismal swamp that was 2020 and we're cruising down the sunny slopes of 2021. I mean, this year cannot be any worse than last year, right? This is a fraud on the American public. Who in God's name needs a weapon that can handle a hundred rounds? You put another layer on, it just makes common sense. Where employees were told to be, quote, less white. Tastes like crap, but at least they don't hate white people. America might be a little roughed up right now, but because of God-fearing, gun-toting American patriots like yourself, she's not going to be down long. In the meantime, for your own personal mental health, I would suggest putting down the Prozac and the self-help books and follow us down to the endorphin-producing paradise, a veritable bow hunters of Valhalla that we like to call Texas. I've hunted all over Texas, but last year I was looking for a target-rich environment where I had a chance at killing a really good buck with my Hoyt bow. Now, my good friends at Realtree said, if you want to kill a big buck, you need to go to Paul Holton Deer Hunts. So, I called up Paul, booked a hunt, and he said, hey, go to town. Not really sure if Paul knew exactly the ramifications of him telling me to go to town, but to town I went. Sharp sticks and AR-15s. I can see how a man would derive a lot of pleasure and satisfaction from that. It is really good to be back at Paul's this year and to be in camp with my good buddies from Realtree. Mr. David Blanton himself is even in camp with us. We're gonna have a good time. Hey, Big brother. Fan. Yeah, I love what y'all do. Yeah, time. yeah, I hear you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much good to see you, man. <laughs> it's great to have you in how camp. You doing, yeah. How many hours do you have in your truck right now? Uh, approximately. Two dozen. Well, you'll go through them in a day and a half. I'll try to pack light. A lot of times at Paul's, we're hunting a specific deer. He scouts these areas and knows the deer that are in these areas. So he kind of gives you an idea, shows you some trail camera pictures. And on this particular hunt, we're looking for a deer called Footlong's Buddy. Footlong's Buddy sounds like some kind of street nickname somebody has. Hey man, you seen Footlong's Buddy? You know who I'm talking about, Footlong's Buddy. Used to hang out with Earl and Ray Ray and Dirty Steve and them. Footlong's buddy is a big mainframe 10. I mean, he's a heck of a deer, and he's actually almost gonna be a 12 point. But if we get a look at him, he's gonna die. Well, that first morning, the sun's coming up, and it doesn't take long till we see some good bucks start moving. It's the first morning. We've got deer moving out there already. Sun just came up. This is always an exciting place to be. We're gonna sit tight. Hopefully one of these big bucks will come by and get broadside. I'm making a 
Christmas grape, I think, is a call book. I'm sitting on pins and needles, man. It is fun. It doesn't matter where you are. That first morning when that sun is coming up and it's all about to start going down, it's exciting. There comes that big ten. He's coming. He's a good deer, man. I don't know. That's a hard deer to shoot on the first day here. There's two bucks we're hunting, and they're both much bigger than him. If he comes in here broadside, I might have to kill him. Great morning hunt, didn't see Footlong or his buddy, so we headed back to camp. For the evening hunt, we decided to jump right back in the same blind, and it didn't take long before the deer started moving. We hunted this morning, had a couple good bucks come in, but uh, we kept the safety on the whole way. We actually came in here and switched out blinds. This is a Summit Viper. If you gotta hunt out of a ground blind, these Summits are great. We won't sit tight and hopefully be a full draw right here. All right, boys and girls, here he is, that classic deer that y'all are watching at home going, man, why ain't Kip shooting that deer? He thinks he's better than everybody else? No, uh, I, I kind of want to shoot that deer. I just know how big the deer at Paul Holton's are, and I also know these Texas deer, their body size will throw you off big time. You got to watch that, ground shrinkage, it's a real thing. So you got to understand, I'm looking to kill a mature deer with some great big old antlers. And at Paul's place, you can be a little pickier. What I'm saying is you have to factor in geography to sort of recalibrate your standards. Just like looking for a wife. I mean, a small town nine might only be like a big city six. So you have to adjust your standards according to your geography. At least he didn't walk seven yards from the blind. Now you might see me being a little picky this week on a buck, but on a doe, I do not discriminate. You know she made me rock and roll again. The doe is basically the Karen of the animal kingdom. Most of them don't know how to mind their own business. Um, excuse me, sir. I see you in the ground blind. You and your buddy pointing the camera at me. You don't even have a face mask on. Ah, shooting does just never gets old. One interesting thing about this season is I'm testing a bunch of different brands of broadheads to try to find the ultimate broadhead. The broadhead I shot this doe with was one of my top contenders. It's a four blade expandable broadhead, but it didn't bleed at all. And it didn't look like it got great penetration. Once we looked at the high speed replay, we could see why it probably didn't pass through. That four blade broadhead hit that deer's elbow bone. She reacted slightly to the shot, just enough to bring her elbow back, and it dead centered that leg bone, shattering the leg bone and making it fully penetrated the deer. It just didn't exit on the other side. He tastes good. They got a worse attitude problem, and they're smaller, so they're harder to hit. Ooh. Cam Haynes, never heard of her. I'm not trying to upstage you, Cam, all right? This was just the easiest way to get this doe across these prickly pear cactus. I was excited to get back to camp and show David Blanton what a true Texas trophy looked like. Yeah, that's awesome. I you shot a doe. I got broadheads to test, man. <laughs> Paul, you'd be proud of me, man. What are you shaking your head for? It's always cool to go back to the skin shed and analyze exactly what damage your broadhead and your arrow did so that you can sort of assess both shot placement, what vital organs it hit. That's the science of deer hunting, man. That's how you learn to be a better bow hunter. There's bone fragments in her elbow all in here. See that, ladies and gentlemen, you can shoot those, let young 10 points live to grow into giant 10 points, and it's still just as tasty. We put out some Spartan trail cameras and we were not seeing Footlong's buddy anywhere in the area. What we did find was a really good, really wide eight point. There was no way to get a tree stand in there and we didn't really want to just pop up a blind in that area. I'm a big fan of just trusting your real tree camouflage and making yourself a brush blind and hunting on the ground. To be honest, it's my opinion that that's more effective than a ground blind in a lot of cases because especially when the ground blind's established and maybe people have shot a few deer out of that same ground blind, 
makes it a little bit easier for deer to pinpoint you. Now, if you get out with your real tree and you apply some stealth, I think you're gonna be better off 90% of the time. All right, boys and girls, we are uh, on the ground waiting on a big buck. There's a lot of, a lot of good sign. The deer's starting to rut here in Texas, but it's a real pretty still evening. We just had to see what comes strolling down the trail. The Antler King was all cleaned up, and this looks like a smoking spot, but we are not seeing anything. We had high hopes for this spot. There's a really big buck in here running, but so far, we have not seen a deer, and the sun is setting fast. Oh, 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 buck right there, buck right there. Little buck. The deer just really didn't move. Even this little buck didn't move till last light, but then we figured out why. first hog just kind of trots on by. The second hog stops at the Antler King at about 35 yards. This is going to be a great opportunity to see if the G5 dead meat works as an effective vaccine for the swine flu. Right when I released this arrow, the hog did start to move forward a little bit. So by the time my arrow got there, it hit him just a little bit further behind where I wanted to, but it quartered up in him, and it must have smoked something inside of him because there was blood everywhere. Man, that's a lot of blood. That's a lot of blood. I see my loom knot. He is down, baby. Come on. Man, that is a monster hog. Look at this size of this hog. Man, that'll work. <laughs> That's a monster hog, man. Not very big teeth, but... <coughs> Look at the size of him, would you? I don't know if that other one was bigger, smaller, or what, but... That's a good one right there, man. We hadn't shot a big buck yet, but we are steadily chipping away at the bonus targets. We were in here trying to kill a big eight point or a call buck that we were looking for in this area, but two big old hogs trotted in and scared off our deer. So sometimes you gotta call an audible, man. I know Paul will be glad to have that hog killed. I'm not a real big fan of jumping around from stand to stand. If I find a good spot, I'm going to stick with it. However, the big bucks that we've been hunting seem to have relocated. We completely came up with a new plan, set out some Spartan trail cameras, and caught this big old nine-pointer slipping down this road early in the morning, heading to water before he went back to bed. It just barely cracks daylight, and this big nine-pointer is on his way down the road. It was so still that you could hear a gnat fart at 100 yards. Any little thing we did, I feel like if I changed my mind, the deer looked in the blind at us. By the time I got in position and started to draw my bow, this deer decided he'd had enough and he was leaving. So I wanted to get the full draw as fast as I could to get this deer killed before he left. It seemed like if we even shifted our weight to get ready for the shot, this deer was like alert. 
people, which makes it super hard in a little blind like this to draw your bow, communicate with your cameraman when you're right on top of this deer. so quiet and still this morning there's no wind it's cold that buck was all by himself feeding up the road and when I drew my bow there's a little piece of felt missing on my rest I need to refelt it tonight but it's just a little bit of arrow noise when I drew my bow and he busted he busted like he he was fixing to leave but he smoked dude I hit that offside shoulder like the heart shot the heck out of him because he was tense I, you know these Texas deer man they'll drop on you so I aimed right at his heart, put it in his armpit, smoked him. You can see in the high speed replay, this deer slightly moves his elbow up. So I drilled him right in the leg bone, shattering his leg bone and going right through his heart. The only difference between this kill shot and the doe kill shot is on this one with the dead meat, there was blood everywhere. I mean, I know it's been said before, but Stevie Wonder could have followed this blood trail. There's blood right here, blood all over here. He was standing somewhere right in here when the arrow hit him. I feel like I saw him fall in here. But gee, he went down this trail. Blood all over the place right here. You been looking at him the whole time? <laughs> I thought he went this way, man. Look at this buck. Good gracious. That's him. Look at the body on this deer, too. That's a huge deer. Big old frame nine point, man. God, man. Look at that deer, man. You got crab claw right there. Man, that's a pretty buck. This was a hammer of a nine point, and I could not wait to call my boy Brant and get this buck back to camp so we could show Paul and David in the house. That's awesome. I'm, I'm proud of you, though. That's awesome. I'm proud of you for killing some does, man. Yeah, but I was just picking up your slack for temporarily. That is awesome. Hey, I was gonna see if I had That's a big body deer. That's dude. a big deer. Thanks, sir. Appreciate you, brother. Golly. What you think, man? That was a good one, man. Yeah. He's the size of both my does put together. <laughs> well, boys and girls, that's about all the deer and hog killing we can fit into one Texas episode this week. Isn't it amazing? how when you participate in God's perfect life cycle and kill tasty animals with sharp sticks, how much joy and freedom it actually brings you. And if y'all like this Texas episode, you're gonna love next week. It's Texas part two. We're right back down here at Holton Deer Hunts with our real tree buddies. And this time we're busting out the raw AR-15s and the raw AR-10s. It's gonna be a good time. And hey, don't y'all leave without stopping by our online store so you can get some apparel that lets everybody know that hey, I like killing deer and I don't care how they do it in the city. <laughs> we'll see y'all next week.